munchkins and viewers alike. It's me, Munchie, and welcome back to another foster home intake story. So today I have exciting news for those of you wondering when we're going to be able to take in gerbils. Technically, we already do take in gerbils. It's just very hard in this area to find gerbils in needing a rehome and or a place to go and or emergency cases. But today I have finally found a gerbil and I'm happy to share this gerbil adventure story with you guys today. So I'll take you along, share with you right now what the ad looks like, when we're going to go get it picked up, and then bring her home to share with you guys more about her in hopes that we can learn a little bit more about the gerbil in question and just to make her comfortable here while she gets evaluated, then gets placed in a home in the future of her very own. So just as a reminder, I want to let you guys know I only will take in animals that I am capable of, that I'm aware of, and I know their full care and I'm comfortable with, as well as if I have room. So please understand I am not just a person that's going out and getting these animals. I have a foster home that's run like a rescue, which technically you can, you can call me basically at this point a mini rescue. I am a mini rescue and so I don't operate like a personal pet owner where I will treat my animals to a luxurious lavish life. I just try to find them a good place to go temporarily until they are able to be placed in a suitable home. So if anybody is confused out there, that's why I was wasn't taking any requests. That's why I wasn't really responding to people saying, oh, hey, take in this animal, do this, do rats, do hedgies. I mean, I love these animals, but I hope you guys understand this channel is not just about me personally. It's about the mission. And the mission is to rescue, to foster, and to educate you guys and take you guys along with what I do in hopes that maybe you guys out there will get inspired by this and save an animal closer to you and to help them out in any way you can. Which so far with my videos and just looking at the comment section have been wonderful. A lot of you guys were, oh, I didn't know about this. I would love to learn more. Or, oh, I am currently doing this. This is wonderful. You're doing it too. Oh my gosh, we can relate and things like that. So it's wonderful and I'm happy. So again, today I'm sharing a video with you guys of an intake gerbil. So here's the first part, the how it all starts, which is the finding the ad on Craigslist, offer up Facebook, wherever, and then contacting the seller. So here is the post that I saw tonight. While I was at work. It says right here, female gerbil asking for small rehoming fee. She can come with food, cage, bedding, wheel, and ball if needed. Great for first pet. I've had her for one year, expecting a newborn and need the extra space for a nursery. So remember guys, I don't like the idea of people rehoming because they're replacing the animal with something else. Like say if you were to replace an animal with an animal, replace an animal with an infant, replace an animal because you're moving, things like that. I don't personally like that. But but in a rescue work, you really gotta just be understanding and kind, even though I don't personally like it. And you guys might not like hearing that she's technically replacing this gerbil because she needs to have space for a nursery as well as to just have more space for a baby, more time for a baby. It is all right. It is okay to be frustrated at this, but at the same time, at least I'm stepping in and at least she's trying to rehome this gerbil, which is on Craigslist. Now, unfortunately for this poor gerbil, here. As you can see by the photos, it's not really in the best setup. So that means it was not given the correct care. And gerbils, they are massive chewers and they chew through plastic like crazy. That's why you see a lot of people in acrylic and or glass tanks that are suitable for them so they don't chew through plastic. But in this case, this female gerbil is alone, which they should be paired. But she apparently has been alone for a while. I didn't really ask and I probably will ask when I see her if her gerbil has been housed with another before and just kind of ask her a little bit more but she seemed really friendly when I was texting her but this gerbil is in what looks like a two-tier KT critter trail which is not suitable for gerbils at all and it's not even suitable for any other species because it's so dang tiny for the amount of floor space provided so if you think hamsters were very needy gerbils are even needier they need lots of things to chew lots more bedding you're gonna be spending more money on a gerbil than you would say a hamster so just be aware of that people who are wondering what's the difference between gerbils and hamsters. I feel like gerbils, with the amount of bedding you need for them to burrow and make burrows in, it's going to be a lot and you need bigger space so that you can actually have that depth of bedding in there. It's it's pretty crazy. People don't understand how much they really need for these small animals. But another photo shows a very beautiful gerbil with a white patch going down the nose. And then another side view, which you can't really see a wheel in here, even though she does say that 
that there's a wheel provided, but I'll get into the conversation we had, kind of give you some highlights because I'm not going to share with you all of what we talked about and said, but basically my approach was, hey, I saw your post. Is she still available? Yes. Wonderful. I've been looking for a while. No luck. What's her personality? And she tells me she's pretty active, loves her paper rolls, likes to run on her wheel. So that sounds really good. Sounds like it's healthy. And then I asked about temperament. How does she like to be handled? Uh, she says she's been handled before. She has nip, but it's not bad. Children have handled her before. Asked me if I was interested. Then I said, yes, I was. What name do you call her? They gave me a name and the name chosen was Polly. So I kind of want to call her Polly Pocket. Never really got to play with the Polly Pockets when I was younger, but Polly Pocket it is. Or maybe another name for Polly. I don't know. It's just Polly for now. I do like the name Polly itself, so I'll be keeping Polly. We just kind of made plans to set up and meet. And so that's what we are currently doing. So like I said before, even though this is a bad setup and it's a single house gerbil and it doesn't look like it's in a good environment, you want to always be nice to a person like this, no matter what. Until you meet them, then you could probably assess the situation and judge based on what you see. If this person absolutely cares a lot, if the cage is clean. I mean, even though it wasn't in proper size, maybe the cage is clean, maybe it's spotless. There has been some pretty scary stories where I have had, say, the moldy rescue of the six hamster litter, and that was pretty terrifying where you know he was not taking care of those animals at all, but it's expected a lot of money for them. So I'll give you some updates as they come in and share with you guys the intake later. So see you in the next clip. Hey guys, Munchie here. So I just came back home from work and this is the day before we were supposed to go and pick up the gerbil and it turns out the owner gave the gerbil away to a family member. So unfortunately we are not going to be able to pick up the gerbil as planned. However, this video is not going to go to waste. This is just kind of an insight of what I deal with on a daily basis and you guys have asked me to kind of talk about this and or share my experience. So this is one of the many experiences that I've had where I've had ghosting, I've had flakes, I've had really weird responses to my inquiries. It's like, why do you even submit an actual pet ad if you can't handle, you know, people inquiring about it? It's just some, some people are very strange. So the gerbil we cannot save. However, that doesn't mean that there isn't another pet out there that needs our help. Gerbil failed. Let's try to save another animal. And we did the best we could. Sometimes these situations just suck. She apologized, said, oh, sorry. I, you know, I'm giving it away to a family member. I didn't think that they would want it. Turns out they do. It's like, okay. So, moving on. Hello munchkins. So new day. I have a new intake that I am currently going out and rescuing right now. We are going out and getting a Syrian hamster. So when I first contacted this lister, they had no photos or description of the animal in question. And so I had to inquire. I saw that they were housing them in a bin cage and I made myself wonder if I really should be going after this hamster, especially since this lister was looking for a good home, said it had a bin cage, comes with a bunch of accessories and very cautious when it comes to doing the money route because there's some that really do need saving and it's worth putting and investing that much money in even though I will not get any of that money back that's not the goal the goal is to see if this hamster is in really bad danger and or just needs better care and a better life so I made the call after talking to my rescue friends that I'm friends with they own their own rescue I talked with them and I'm like should I really but then when I noticed the bedding was mostly hay they look like they had weird food mix and their wheel looked to be about a 6.5 inch wheel. I made the call to go and save this guy. It might not look like the worst care in the world, but I will go and rescue this hamster even if it might not seem a big deal. Now remember guys, the six hamster rescue I did, the cages in photos didn't look that bad until I opened them up and found mold. So you really cannot tell until you actually see it in person. So just be advised for that. So here I go, rescuing the little hammy now. Now, which this is, I believe, if I remember correctly, a female Syrian hamster. Hello everyone, I am back with the new hammy in question, and this is the introduction of Little Bean. So, when I got Little Bean, I did see the bin she was being housed in because the photos don't do it justice, and it is a 29 gallon bin, which is appropriate size. However, for Syrians, they should have something a lot larger since fostering them and having experience with Syrians. Definitely need something like a 40 gallon breeder tank and or or a 50 gallon bin cage. So for her, it was an okay setup. It's still above the minimum requirements, but with all of these rescues, 
you don't know what you're gonna get. And in this case, I just took a chance. So we're gonna kind of look at little Bean here and see exactly what her setup looked like and her personality. The owner was very nice and she was giving me uh, a lot of answers and she was very open, so I appreciate that. And she was a nice person. I've actually gotten a few people that I've kind of questioned just a little bit about their true intentions, one being the moldy hamster rescue where I did have to shove out $40, but I saved six hamsters from a horrible situation and did take one to the vet. Like I said, guys, these can be a good call or can be, you know, they would have been fine if given to somebody else. But for me, I don't mind hanging on to them and finding the right homes for them because not everybody is gonna jump through hoops like I do. I <laughs> like go above and beyond and some people find it crazy that I have all these requirements, but there's good reason why there's requirements like this because people don't really understand their natural care and behavior and they just go with, oh, you know, they're just animals or they're just small or they're just gonna die in a couple years. I care very deeply about these guys. So first off, you're going to be seeing this really cute little design that says bean. I like that a lot. Uh, and then we have a mesh lid. It looks like it's been partially DIY'd. You can see that there's no zip ties, so it looks like here that this is just loose on it. And there might have actually been zip ties. Let me see here. I'm looking through the wrong viewfinder. Yeah, it looks like there used to be some zip ties right here. Not so sure what happened to that. But we got this to look at where you can see there is hay bedding, which is not really appropriate. It's okay to have hay, just not it being being the main source of bedding. It's great for a nesting material, but you gotta make sure you also have something that is warm and soft because they use different types of materials in the wild that keeps them warm. And surprisingly enough, there is some hides in here that was not in the photos and a different wheel. And I had two other bags she gave me, so we'll go through those bags here. But this is Little Bean. And I think Little Bean is a golden umbrus mix, which is funny because Curtis, uh, hi Curtis, giving you a little shout out here. You recently got Alfie and it kind of looks like Alfie a little. Huh, Bean? You kind of look like Alfie. But you can see that beautiful dark coat over the golden, and I found out from her too, because I asked, because she said that she got Bean here when she was only a year old. I asked her where she got her from, and it turns out she might have got little Bean from a backyard breeder who had three to four hamsters and was just giving her up. So she was a litter of the two hamsters that apparently she had um, when she went to go pick little Bean up. So that is where little Bean comes from. She's not a pet store hamster, but she has such a gorgeous coat. Don't you, girl? You look very healthy. So she said that little Bean is most likely about two to three years old. Hi, sweetie. Oh my god. I love you already. Look at you. Oh, you're so cute. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Hi there. Hi, my camera hates, hey, hey, hates to focus on moving targets right in front of it, even though it's so clear as day. There we go. Yeah, I'm having problems with this camera. I would love to save up money for another Canon. I switched to a Panasonic camera because we used to have Panasonics and they take beautiful pictures, just not the greatest when it comes to video filming. It was one of the only 4K cameras out there on the market at the time. And then Canon finally afterwards released their 4K line, which was at a high price at the time. And there was already 4K cameras out there on the market, so I just went with this one. You guys have asked me which camera I use, and so that is what I use. I use Panasonic. I wouldn't mind seeing the quality of the Canon, but yeah, hi, little bean. Hi, sweetie. How you doing? Yeah, I'm a new handler now. So Little Bean is supposed to be very friendly, hand-tamed. Owner loved her, just didn't have enough time for her. But she wanted her going to a good home, so it's totally okay to be listing them for a reasonable rehoming fee, especially since this bin is now, this bin right here that she's housed in, is now $16.99. And there's a lot of things that she came with that actually doubles the price. But $25 is a reasonable price for rehoming your beloved pet, in my opinion. Anything more, and it depends what they have too, but anything higher usually indicates that they're trying to make their money back, but it was a decent rehoming fee, and oh my gosh, you're just so cute. Hi, sweetie. Oh, you're so cute. But anyways, so she's supposed to be around two to three years old. She does not look two to three years old, to be honest, and oh my gosh, you're climbing out. Look at you. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Oh, but you're very gentle. She's very slow. You see that? So she she possibly is nearing two years old. I, I definitely can tell you that's not a three-year-old hamster. Look how gorgeous her coat is. You do not look three at all. So you're definitely possibly nearing your two-year mark, but you don't look three. Especially since Chunky never made it to three, and you can definitely tell when hamsters start aging. But yeah, she seems very slow, so she is not as young. Oh, careful, my girl. Careful. Do you need a hand? Do you need my hand? I don't think you bite. You've been very good. Oh, look at you just taking your time. 
Yeah, you're just you're just giving me a paw. Are you gonna fully come out? Oh, yes, you are. Wow. Very gentle. Very nice girl. You can tell, too, that she was very well cared for just because of this interaction. Oh, hi. Oh, yeah, maybe you discover there's another hamster in the room. Actually, there's several hamsters in the room. Yeah, you're gonna have hamster friends and they're gonna be chatting with you at night. How about that? This is so cute. Oh my gosh. Are you guys getting this? <laughs> she's just, she's just frozen. Let's just stay here for a while. This is cute. Oh, I like doing health checks when I first get them. So I'm actually going to set the camera down and do a quick fur check and health check completely of her just to make sure she's okay. All right. So everything checks out for little bean here. So we're just going to dive right into what we are seeing here. So we got the water bottle that doesn't look like it leaks, which is good. We do have the seven, I believe, this is, I haven't measured it in like forever, but I believe this is a seven inch flying saucer wheel that is sold at Peco because you can tell by that coloration it is a Peco product, as well as the Peco bridge, Peco igloo, and then this Peco peanut hide. And the peanut hide, I guess, is okay. It's not as big for a steering. You should definitely look into getting bigger hides that have a good entryway, kind of like this here, just so she can fit inside of it. But it's an okay hide. I mean, it's not as good as, say, this hide, but they don't really like like these plastic hides very well. Not at all. They really do like the wood stuff. So, oh, here's a chew toy. Oh, we do have chew toys in here. That's good. You can tell she's used that. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I startle you a little bit? Oh, look at you. You're like, oh, welcome to my crib. But yeah, this is, this is good. Um, having a bendy bridge so they can walk on it. Um, but like I said before, just hay bedding. That's not appropriate. So I'm going to be completely getting rid of this. I'll be putting her in a different setup. Hi, sweetie. Yes, I'm going to put her in a different setup. She's gonna actually go in a preview of 528 cage. Yeah, hi, hi, hello. Oh, look at you. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh my gosh. Ah. Oh my goodness, girl. Girl, what are you doing, girl? Are you running away? Little bean, little naughty bean. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, I'm so happy. I get to take care of you for a little bit until I find you a good home. Look at her. She's so docile. Oh, I love it. You're not hyper like all the crazy young ones I've been getting. At least... This owner really loved you. You can definitely tell. Just stop escaping a little bit. We tried to give them the best food possible. And they also get fruits and veggies three times a week and treats two times a week. And oh my gosh, girl, 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 sweetie. All right, so that wheel, like I was saying earlier, inappropriate size for Bean, um, but in the pictures, it was a different wheel. It was a silent spinner, 6.5 it looked like. So let's come over here because we got two bags right here, um, which surprisingly enough, there is a nine inch silent runner in here. And that guys, that is definitely a $30 item. So we use these. So I'm actually surprised that she didn't have this one in there, but maybe she just had that one in there because it was lightweight and wasn't gonna fall over if we were transporting her. So I guess, I guess that works. However, it's really not needed for her. This, this is a better size. I'm gonna see if her back curves in this. Sometimes you can see their back slightly curving, so she might just need a 10 inch. And it looks like that was the only one in that bag. And then this bag is the exercise ball that she told me was an LED. And then, oh, here it is. All right. So it looks like it is the KT Supreme hamster and gerbil food. So this stuff is actually not the greatest and I do not recommend it, but just mixing it in with good food will be fine. So at least we have the bag of which it came from and we know what's inside of it. And it looks like we have a really big hide. Oh my goodness, this is a large hide. This is a um, very, very big hide. And oh my gosh, are you thirsty? You a thirsty little bean? Oh, she a thirsty little bean. But this is a supposed to be, oh, isn't that so cute? She even labeled it too. Anyways, this is uh, supposedly a guinea pig hide, although I really don't see guinea pigs fitting in here unless they're very small adolescents. People at my work, since I work at a pet store, they get surprised when they see, customers see large guinea pigs. They're like, oh my gosh, that is such a large guinea pig. Oh my God, it's fat. And I have to inform them, no, that's the size they get when they're adults. People, they're so used to everything thing being a baby and it looks like right here we have some treats these are the Vitacraft oven baked carrot treats real veggie flavor not so sure about these treats I haven't tried these treats out but that is all we have so there was no bedding that was included except for the bedding that's in there all right introducing beans new crib so we added the things that she had in there we added the nine inch wheel we added the little exercise ball as kind of a hide and or storage area because a lot of the times hamster they do like to store their food in another section, but I've actually had a few hamsters leave all their food in the food bowl and or put their food in the food bowl like Sahara. Very 
weird and bizarre behavior, but it's just some hamsters do that. We got the bendy bridge she came with, and then I added a tunnel in there, so she has a little tunnel system. I'm probably gonna redo it at some point, because you can stretch it a lot longer, but for now I'm just doing basics and simple. And then we have some kebabs hanging up, if this will focus please, thank you. Her old water bottle, which I didn't realize had a guard and was a Velcro attached to the bin, so that's very interesting how she did that instead of just have the guard hanging on the side. Maybe um, she was just escaping or something. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. And then I got some seed mix and it was hers and also mine. So I mixed them both together so she can gradually get used to the seed mix we have. And then she has the Carefresh bedding here that I've provided a lot more cozier than hay. And this is basically her temporary setup. And I also included uh, her old chew and some new chews too. I want to at least have five chew toys in here of different variety at all times just because they need a lot of different options and just for them to get used to knowing what they want to chew on like this one right here is a favorite the apple from all living things if it will focus on it instead of the food thank you it's so all living things apple right there we got the bark we got the stick well the colored stick that's i think that's a scented or maybe not scented and then just this little stick right here too and her original chew toy besides the kebabs hanging up so yeah let's just put little bean inside and see how she likes it Oh, oh, do you like the new chew? Oh, she likes it. See, I told you guys, favorite chew of hamsters. They love that. Also, the mice that I was fostering love that too. She's such a cute hamster. You don't see this coloration in uh, pet stores because they don't breed hamsters for genetic purposes. They just breed them to sell them. So you get a lot of the times the short haired golden regular that they breed and they constantly breed. Um, and then you get the fancy creams and the banded creams and the banded blacks, but you don't really see a lot of different coloration hamsters. And that's what I really love about hamsters, especially Syrians, because they have have this gorgeous gene pool where they have these beautiful colors and, and lengths and fur types and oh it's, it's just so nice but it looks like she is checking out her new digs yeah you went from a partially wired bin cage to a wired cage that's a little bit bigger and more suited to your needs oh somebody else is awake you can hear so let's see all right so Bean looks like she might be too big for this wheel. Yeah, if you can see there, she isn't really too bad off in this wheel. You can tell that she's big, but she's not curving her back in a way where it's too bad. But if you notice right here, her head starts here and her tail starts there. So she's kind of not a really bad arch. It's still somewhat straight, but she is tilting more up. But this wheel definitely is too small for her. So I thought that she was on the borderline of maybe a nine inch wheel, but it looks like I will be needing to get a 10 inch wheel. You don't want to have a really bad curved back because that means constant pain. All right, much better. So we got the 12 inch silent runner that is supposed to be used for animals like hedgehogs because of the width of it inside here. Yeah, that's gonna be a big enough wheel for you for sure. All the 10 inch uh, wheels and 11 inch wheels I have are currently in use. So she will have to enjoy a 12 inch wheel that's of course the best size. And as you can see here, because of the color uh, faded because my camera got adjusted to the green here, you can really see her her undercoat, that gorgeous color. Oh my gosh, I just, I love it. You're such a cutie and she has gray underneath too when she stands up. I mean, look at her, look at her. Can I get you to, hey, hey, little bean, little bean, look at me. I love you already, look at me. Look at me, I love you, come here, look at me. Yeah, hi. Hi, sweetie. Well, I know what can get her attention. Every new intake I have, I give them a welcome treat. I give them whimsies. Just one of these is A-OK -okay because it has right here, it's vegetarian, grain-free, gluten-free, and GMO-free. These are great treats. Treats, mind you guys, treats, not actual meals. Treats for hamsters every once in a while. You can give them something like this for them to chew on. Hey, little bean, I got you a whimsy. Sweetie, 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 there you go. No, not anymore. Oh, she is very happy to be on that wheel. Look at her run. <laughs> Remember guys, hamsters run at least five to 10 miles a night in the wild and an average of five on their wheel in captivity to understand our magnificent little creatures. <laughs> Don't 
Don't you dare look at me like that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love her already. As long as I can care for her, that's all that really matters. I'm glad that I got her and nobody else did that was going to be irresponsible. Because like I said, in my foster home, I always screen people. Making sure they have the right setup, they understand their hammy's needs, and will provide an enrichment such as this and or larger. We'd be doing here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that Oh, if I kept them all, I would be loaded with hamsters. Right now, I only got 10 foster hammies and one foster mouse. And yes, I have yet to introduce a lot of those hammies, so I will get them out when I can, guys. If I feel like I'm in the mood to film their introduction story, I will. I got Spitfire still. I got some of the uh, mice, which I think I've already filmed the mice introduction. Um, it just, it's been taking a while of getting everything up. I have Smokey that I have yet to introduce. Smokey actually came from a fan that unfortunately had medical issues and that's why she had to give him up, but he's such a cutie. If you guys wanna see any updates of Fosters, just follow my Instagram. You can see live updates. I post mostly there and I'm more focused, like I said, on my foster home than I am on YouTube. So when I get these videos up, it's gonna be random. They're gonna be late, but I appreciate everybody sticking through and enjoying what I do here in my mission to rescue, foster, and educate. And I try my best to educate myself too. Times are always changing, updates will happen, you just gotta be in the know and also to have personal experience with these guys too They are such misunderstood creatures that I love so dearly. So thanks guys for watching the introduction to little bean I hope you enjoyed it If you did hit like to show your support comment down below with anything relevant to today's video and subscribe If you're new here and would like to see more from me. So thanks guys and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye. Bye